Let's get ready to rumble. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. What's up, man? Hey, we're in. Look, look, everybody, it's uh, it's it's the Pops of the Rican show. Yes, and and uh, I know. Uh, I'm getting old, but I think I'm still Pops. Yep, and I'm the Rican, and we want to welcome you guys to the Pops and the Rican show. How are you feeling today, bro? You know, I think, honestly, uh, if I was any better, it'd probably be illegal. Because <laughs> uh, I'm sure that somebody would be like, oh, that old man's having way too much fun. We got to do something about that, you know. Yeah, they're going to be like, He's, but, that's too much. That's too much, man. But, uh, yeah, I, it's, I, it's a great day to be living and alive in uh, – in central Indiana, anyway, I don't know what it's like in uh, in Portugal because I've not been there. Never been there? No. Been in Portugal. I think, uh, I think the – have you – I mean, have you traveled across? Oh, I, I, I have traveled. Where'd you go? But, but not to Portugal. No. Oh, I went I went to, to – what's that, with the name of that country? Uh, Illinois. I went there <laughs> one time. This guy's got uh, looks. <laughs> and uh, – oh, I went all the way to uh, – I went all the way to Oregon – but not on the trail. That was not nah. no. This so, is scary. No, so uh, no. I actually, I've I, I've been to uh, some a lot of the Central America countries. Uh, okay. been, you know, been down to Guatemala and Belize. And, yes, yeah. And uh, Mexico, Mexico. That's as far and, as I, I mean. I've gone obviously to Puerto Rico, but I've you know I've been in uh, that's I've, I've been that as well. Like the tip, where it's like Honduras and. You know, uh, there's there's different spots that, in that area. Is about as far as I went. Cause I've been I've been to Honduras. I've been to Puerto Rico, although that's technically not a foreign country. It's, oh, come on, brother. You know, they they actually uh, they own the United States, and so we're part of Puerto Rico. So it's not really. That's how I understand it, anyway. A whole other thing. We talk about that. That's another. That's a whole other thing. We're looking at right right now, bro. That's a whole. But, other, hey, that's I. I I will tell you that uh, right now is not the time to travel unless you're coming to Greenwood, Indiana. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, man. Because it, you know, if you're going to travel, go to Greenwood and and hashtag go to Gutty's because man, I'm telling you, Gutty's Comedy Club is the place to be, especially this weekend. Bro, I know that we're saying it because it, it came. It, it, I know it's coming across bias, but I'm I'm just going to say it's it's a great place, man. We're having we're having fun. And uh, everybody's loving what we're doing, and it's just, it's a, it's just, it's just great. It's, I'm, I'm having fun. I love it. I love Gutty's man, and I love everybody that's a part of it, for real. That's, that's, that's something that I feel like since this whole shutdown, um, the support has been crazy. And so oh, I, I want to say thank you to every single one of you guys out there that has given to Gutty's that believe in Gutty's, uh, your prayers and your everything, your financially everything. It just has been nothing but um, great for us. And I am I just want to thank everybody for doing that. So thank you so much for that, too, as well, because that is that was a huge thing, bro, because that was a uh, that was scary times, man. That was scary times for us. We just started. You know what I mean? And so we're babies still. But it feels like we've been here for a long time. That's how that's how the community is, is here. So I'm I'm grateful for that. Well, and and I will tell you um, right now, you know, we have we have seen some great things kind of come out of this COVID shutdown. If you want to call it the, the, the world's timeout, whatever had happened, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we've, we've stepped our, up our game with, uh, with what we're doing with Gutty's TV yeah. and, and uh, starting to, we've got some plans to really put some cool things into place where comedians are going to have an opportunity to put some of their, uh, some of their comedy out and yeah. we're, we're going to help, uh, we're going to help them, promote and uh, produce that and get that out for them. Uh, and, and I'm excited about that. 
But then because of all of that, we've been able to also get in touch with some really great comics that are rolling through. Right. Like our, like our guest tonight here on the Pops and the Rican show. Exactly. Uh, you know, we connected with him, and uh, I'm excited to have him rolling through this weekend. I think it's going to be a fantastic time. Uh, and not only do we have our, you know, the headliner, uh, John Deming, who's, who's our guest on the show here, yeah. but also we got we got John Cheshire, right. who's, a, who's a local music, music comic that just... Yeah. Is high energy, lots of fun, and yeah, he always brings the goods. Always bring oh. it. We appreciate that too as well. He's always got good material that comes in and just keeps everybody entertained. I'm telling you, man, we're bringing in great shows. That's why Greenwood just needs to wake up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's time for people to to say, you know what, it's it's okay. I I saw the news this week. I saw it on the news. Yeah, they came out and they said, look, Indiana's numbers are going down for for COVID cases, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. Because it means that people are actually doing what they're supposed to. They're washing their hands. They're not walking around yeah. licking sick yeah. people's faces and, yeah. you know, walking around like sucking on somebody's nose. Uh, I don't know. All, I don't, that's weird people. And, and, and let's be honest. There is, to my knowledge, we have not had anybody eating raw bat no. here in the state of Indiana. <laughs> so our numbers are going down. Gus. And, and, uh, and Gus is saying, yes. He's like, yeah, it. no bats here, bro. So uh, anyway, uh, we're we're ready for a great a great weekend, and we're we're right. ready for we're ready for this weekend with with our headliner John Deming, and I'm excited to have him come in. Uh, if people if people have not seen his uh, any of his stuff, uh, Dry Bar Comedy has a has a one of his specials out there. Yep. If you you should go see that, and uh, I'm going to put him on notice. His his new special from Gutties is going to be coming out soon, <laughs> and uh, we're just I'm just going to throw that out there and see if it, when, there, he, when we bring him on, it's going to be like, is that right? And then see what he see if he supports me or not. Uh, I hope he I hope he supports me because, well, I'll just be honest. He's big. He's bigger than me, and, and I'm and I'm old, and I'm pretty sure he could whoop me from here to Tuesday, and I'd be like, oh, sorry. But anyway. Let's, I don't know if you got anything else to do. Let's, let's bring oh, them on. Yes, I do have one more thing that we got to oh. make sure we mention. Make sure that to get your tickets online, you got to download our mobile app. Our oh, mobile yeah. App everything you need uh, to be able to access everything Gutty. So from our tickets to the store to buy merch. Um, also, um, Gutty's TV is on there too as well. You can download all that stuff. You can, you can watch everything and, and be notified when the next show is coming up. It's real easy to do. Just go to um, the Google Play App Store. Download it and you're ready to go. So I'm, I'm good, man. I'm I'm good to go. I'm ready to start this bad boy. Well, let's uh, let's get this show on the road then. All right. Well, let's go ahead and welcome John Deming to the show. How are you guys doing? What's well, good? Hey, yeah. How you feeling, man? You can see. I don't know, those of you who are watching the video can see that I'm dressed for. Uh, uh, probably a much more tropical climate than one I'm going to find in Indiana. <laughs> I don't know how many beaches there are there. But. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, you, you probably will fly right over Indiana Beach, which is is a right. world-renowned resort that uh, we have here. Uh, people from all over, they will traverse through the cornfields just to go to Indiana Beach. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a it's a destination that uh, all the movers and shakers are are hey, seeking buddy. out. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's the the largest corn water lake uh, in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I I don't uh, I don't even try to explain to people where the water comes from for that lake. Uh, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, well, welcome uh, to the show, man. We we appreciate you taking some time uh, to be able to introduce yourself because I know you're going to be here this weekend. Yeah. And uh, just to just to connect and uh, let everybody know, you know, who John Deming is. We'd like to, you know, bring everybody on here to the show just to get an idea of what it is uh, to live as a comic, especially in this time right now. Man, it's yeah. it's crazy out there right now. But uh, the great thing is we're back open and um, and we're bringing comedy back and and comedy is alive, back and well. And I'm I'm glad that you're going to be here at the show. So. Um, I mean, how's it how's it going over there as, as where you're at right now? Where you at right now? So I live not far from Seattle. Uh, just moved here with my wife and uh, nothing's open yet. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's talk of one of the clubs opening it back up in in July, but I'm in the interesting position of uh, starting out from scratch in a new city, where I'd ever after everything opens back up. So that'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, but I'm kicking myself because the city I just moved away from is Salt Lake City, and it was like the first comedy city to open back up. Oh, snap. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, okay. Yeah. So that is that how is that how you got connected with uh, Provo in Provo, Utah? Where uh, you were able to do, you know, dry bar there and yeah. So yeah, for those those you don't know, uh, my specials through a company called Dry Bar Comedy. They do uh, kind of specialize in clean comedy specials. Mm. Um, but they're located in in a town called Provo, uh, which is like a fifteen minute walk from my apartment. Okay. Um, so I first became aware of them when they first started. The first couple people that they had filmed specials for were friends of mine. Awesome. Uh, I had already been doing comedy in, in Utah for a little while and uh, they kind of put me in touch with them and I had done a lot of hosting for them and opening up for people and things like that and mm-hmm. just kind of making my way in the in the clubs in in Salt Lake and um, the guy the guy who books for dry bar owns the other comedy clubs in Utah so it's pretty okay. easy to kind of kind of make those connections um, but I, I got really lucky I got in at a time when they were looking for people and I, you know, kind of hit my stride at the right time and awesome. it all worked out and it's right before I moved. So that's good too. <laughs> so is that in the, in, well, that's good too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so is that in the time when you start, when did you first start jumping into comedy? Uh, I'm about five years in or okay. so, mm-hmm. uh, five and a half ish. Um, Technically, the first time I did comedy was when I was in high school, so that would have been a lot okay. longer ago. Yeah, um, but consistently, about 2015 is when I started, uh, and I started in in college. You know, and in college we kind of had a club where, sort of a collective where you could get feedback on your stuff, pitch stuff, and they did shows every six weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the kind of the, the interesting thing about it was that you had to write new stuff for every single show. Uh, you couldn't I- reuse stuff, so you, I kind of got into this rhythm of having a new sort of five to eight minutes of stuff every six weeks, which is a a pretty good, you know, it's a workable pace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But it's pretty quick. I don't know. uh, You know, you guys probably know being comedy people that it takes a long time to write even two minutes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, even a solid two minutes. I mean, you have like 30 minutes of stuff that you work together. I think I got, and it just chopped Mm. down to two minutes. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Especially if it's gotta be new material too, as well. Well, yeah. Cause you know, what you see on stage is, yeah. you know, it's the the leanest, most condensed version of itself, right? So, right. you know, two minutes of stuff that's really good, it really is like, you know, 10 minutes of stuff that's mediocre and you take the best two, you know? <laughs> well, and that's, that's one of the things uh, I don't think people understand the importance of word economy for, for a comic. Yeah. And, and so they think, oh, I could probably do that because I'm funny at the office when I have to say one thing every 30 or 40 weeks at a staff meeting and I say something funny and everybody laughs, I should go be into comedy. And then, and then like Steve was saying, they prepare, I got this great 20 minutes of of funny stuff and they get up there and they blow through it in a minute and a half. And then they're like, uh, now what? Yeah. It's a real check, man. It's, it's interesting. Like it's, it's half poetry and we were part poetry and part performance and part public speaking. And there's all these different things that, that, uh, that go into it. I, go ahead. I was like shocked at how bad I was when I started. Okay. Because I, when you, know, you were shocked is because you were, you were encouraged to do it and people were like, you are funny. And so you're like, okay, cool. I'm funny. And you came with that, that expectation. And then you were just, like, I was just arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's it. That's it. I, I know I'm funny. I was like, I can do voices. I'm funny, and <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't, you know. Yeah, because that's different when you're talking to people. You have a built-in context. You have a built-in rhythm, and it's right. a very, very different rhythm than when you're the only one talking. That's you're true. Right. Yeah. When your pauses are dictated by people laughing, as opposed to you know just being in a natural rhythm of a conversation. Right, with your boys and everybody that you know, you're hanging with them, and you know, you know their cadence because they know they they know your style, they know who you are, 
You know what I mean? And it's different right. when it's a totally different crowd. It's never heard of you before. And you're trying to use that same cadence. Sometimes it's like, okay, hold up, y'all. Y'all, I need to win you in first before, you know, I can get open. And I like that. I like that approach of, of the fact that you have to have uh, stage presence too. Like, it's not just, I got these jokes and then, but, but if you're not likable, it's like, if you're not up there where, you know, that your stage presence is so important. And if you don't command the stage, it's almost like, you know, you're, you're just thrown into the wolves. Like they're going to, they're going to know and they're going to see in there. It's kind of like, okay, I'm hope I can't just bank on just my jokes. I got to be able to present something where it's, you know, where it's entertaining. Yeah. Well, it's like my wife, she works as a preschool teacher, you know, okay. she kind of, she's always talking to me about teaching kids and she's very unsubtly preparing me from the fact that she wants a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not subtle at all. <laughs> I don't think she even is trying to be subtle at this point. <laughs> I don't think she realizes what the starting uh, salary in comedy is either, if that's what she's asking for. But, you know, that's one of the things she always says about working with kids is that, you know, it doesn't really matter what boundaries you have as long as they know you're in charge. That's the, the main thing is. You have to establish early and consistently that you're in charge. That's good. And at the at the risk of alienating people who might be coming to see me this weekend before they even see me perform, I, I consider you like children. I think uh, <laughs> that's good, man. In that way, that, like an audience need there's they need a shepherd. They right. need somebody. They yeah. need to know that they can trust you because right because comedians are. Here, here's the thing, especially about doing clean comedy, is everybody's definition of clean is different. Yep, yep. And right. nobody thinks that their definition is different than everybody. Everybody just thinks theirs is like the official, standard, true moral position on what. Clean oh, we're in that spot right there, bro. I, I right. totally get it. Yep. So any, so anything could alienate somebody, and if they don't trust you, then you, they're never going to give you any leeway, right? And like, you know, I. I might not curse, I might not be explicit, but I like I talk about whatever, you yeah. know, and yeah. You never know. I've I've gotten comments on videos that people have put up of me and things that people said on shows that the things you never expect people are going to get mad at. But the more that they trust you, the more they know that you're in charge and yeah. that you're, they're not going to go off the rails, the more leeway they'll give you to be yourself and just do what you do. You right. Know? Well, and you probably because you had done some some work there with dry bar with, with the club there in, in Provo, you had kind of uh, some inside baseball in terms of what the parameters were that they put in place. So that probably helped you in the, in your preparation, because I know a lot of comics that are being asked to do a special out there. Yeah. They're finding out that what they thought was clean, doesn't quite fit the parameters that the guys in Provo want to have for, for their club. And, you know, so it, was that, was that a benefit to you or maybe what do you, how do you see that? I would say yes and no. I'm in the, in one sense, like it was a home game, you know, I was performing yeah. in the place where I lived. So okay. it was, you know, an audience that I performed for before I kind of got the vibe of the city. Um, uh, and that club in particular, they tend to get a little bit of an older audience. So you kind of, you know, you have to massage things a little bit differently. I, I remember one gig that I did in Nevada. I used to have a bit that I did about Will Smith. The audience didn't know who he was. Like, that old. Man. <laughs> that That's old. old, bro. That's old. There's just, <laughs> just three minutes of radio silence. And it's the worst. The worst. It's not even like they were booing or heckling. It was like that. Just quiet. It was like that that polite, like old people thing. We're like, oh, that's that's clever, and that's the reaction. I got. Yeah. <laughs> How sweet! Bless his heart. So, you gotta, so in that case, like I, I knew kind of what their frame of reference was, uh, yeah. but that's the thing is, when I write jokes, I just set out to be funny. Okay. You know, um, and so what other people's definition of where the line is or whatever is, you know, I. It's something that I always have to worry about when I tell it because it's it's not predictable. Okay. I mean, there's always a certain amount of uncertainty, you know, especially when you're dealing with people with different life experiences and different things. Like I've had people 
offended that I have a punchline about polio. You oh, know, I, <laughs> too soon? When I was, right. Yeah, when I, was doing, <laughs> when I was doing comedy at school, I had like a Christopher Columbus joke, and somebody thought that you shouldn't make fun of Christopher Columbus. Oh, goodness. So, <laughs> Oh, like 1492 no, is apparently still too soon for some people. Dude, wow, that's it's crazy. It's crazy now. <laughs> we should okay. So you that's kind of like, best, you know? that, I mean, what can you do to? How can you work through that? You know, yeah. I mean, I get it. I get it. And some people just have their way of around it. But w- the way the the culture is now, or the, you know, at least the the way that things are going now, especially with this whole cancel culture stuff. Um, you writing right now, which is going to be, uh, you know, okay. Did you start off clean or was it, was it something that you gradually went? Oh with? yeah. Yeah. I, I always have been, but you know, I, here's how I would describe my act. I would just, you know how when they give the ratings for movies, they give you like the description of what it is. Yeah. Where it's like PG for like language violence, whatever. Yeah. Like mine, even if it's rated R, it's rated R for thematic elements. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah, like, I, I'm not afraid right. to get heavy sometimes. But right. I'm never, you know, okay, so you push a little grass. bit. Yeah, I got you. You push a little bit, try to make people think, but be very creative. Yeah. And that's the things we try to do here. Is you know when we made when when I decided to, to just go with gutties, I was talking with Dennis, and I was like, look, this the idea is to bring both the the whole clean comedy um, mm. idea. Uh, growing up for me has always been just whack. Like if you're a clean comedian, you're you're bogus, you know, you're just, you're a bum because you're you're whack. And um I didn't I didn't think that there was uh any kind of love for anyone that did clean comedy until you know everybody started seeing like Sinbad and you got Gaffigan, right. you got Seinfeld, you got all these these cats that are doing clean. You're like, see, it can be done. And 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 even that uh, in in essence. But for is that matter, even clean. guys even guys that aren't categorized as clean, like some of their best punchlines are fine. You exactly. know I mean? And that's generally like comics that have respect from other comics don't really like, they don't police your style. They let you do what you do. You know what I mean? Like to me, the whole right. clean versus dirty thing, people say okay. one better than the other. I, it's, it's a matter of taste, you know, like some right. people, some people like jazz. Some people like punk rock. Some people like hip hop. And they're I get all, it. They're all music. Yep, you know? and I get it. And you know, everybody has their opinion. Like for example, Justin Kelly. He's he's been here at Gutty too, and he's performed. He's he's uh he he's been here before, and and he says I think it's easier. I think clean is easier. I'm sure it's not. Um, but in my small amount of experience, he's he's saying that he thinks it's easier. And every like for me, I think it's it's more creative. So you have to work harder. Uh, because you have to sell it um, without having to use a certain, you know, just a certain crassness of, of what, you know, uh, foul language could be. And so the creativity of trying to replace it, I, and I've seen it where comics will take their bits that they've been really blue with and try to make it clean and it doesn't work. So yeah. that creativity is there in order to, uh, try to create something that's going to be funny. You gotta, you gotta work just a little bit harder, in my opinion. Um, yes, it can. I be- think that can be the, the the case sometimes. I wouldn't say all the time. I mean, I think what's hard is going against what you are. You know what I mean? I think it'd be way harder for me to work dirty just because I never have before. Right, you and that I, mean? I got you, and that's where but I'm like, I'm a square. That. Yeah, so- his personality. <laughs> right, right. I got you. So it's like it's like your person. It depends on your personality, which is yeah. I do 100. That's so true. Is because for me, I didn't grow up in that um, in that environment. You know what I mean? I didn't grow up in. I mean, I grew, my uncles were crazy. You know what I mean? They were they were straight up crazy. But at the same time, you know, I grew up in the church, and so it wasn't really something that was every everyday thing unless I went to school. And then school is when I learned how to cuss and all that stuff. But it was yeah. like, you know, it was it it depends on how you you grew up in it. But it just wasn't me and my personality. It's just not me. So. I can't just come off like that. Um, yeah, you have a transition. I, I actually went to school to teach people how to cuss. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, now actually, for me, I, I think the the big thing is people have got to understand that your job is to be funny first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So be be funny, 
be funny first, be authentically funny first. Then when you look at what are the parameters of the place you're going, you're coming to Gutty's, you better know you got to be clean. So be funny, yeah. be funny, but be clean and you're going to be fine. Yeah. And, and if you're, if you're someplace and their expectation is, Hey, uh, you have to be blue. Okay. Guess what? I've worked blue clubs mm -hmm. and I've taken my same clean set that I did the day before at a, at a corporate event where I was, you had to be squeaky clean. I've taken that same set because it's funny and yeah. I can work in, I can work in a blue club because it was funny. And they didn't. I've never had anybody come to me after a show and go, "It was good, but you didn't cuss enough and you didn't tell enough sex jokes." Yeah, I get it. Yep, and that's true. Weirdly enough, I know somebody who did though. It's funny because I, I agree with your point. For the most part, most people. Mm -hmm. th I don't think I've I've never gotten a complaint for being too clean ever. But I had a buddy, one of my best friends, Ryan Irwin, was doing a show in in uh, in Utah like last year, and, and I hosted for him. And a dude walked out because the show was too clean. I right. had never seen that before. Wow, dude. He was like, it's just too much. See, yeah, I guess he was just he was no, I get it. I get a little it. bit more hardcore, I guess. No, I get it. No, it's true because every – and that's the thing is now that, you know, being a club owner, like now we're getting the different side where everybody is like – um, okay, you know what? These guys weren't funny to me. So the, so now it's becoming yeah. more subjective where, okay, the, but the crowd is responding, right? And if the crowd's responding, then that's my, uh, at least for me, that's my barometer or whatever. That's just a way to, the, the, the way I can yeah. measure the night. You know what I mean? It's a successful night because people are having a good time. Now you might have one or two or maybe, but if you have the whole crowd not laughing at your stuff, then yeah, it's a different thing. So it it depends on the the um just the the attitude and the temperature of the crowd that de that determines or whether or not the comic was on point or not because you know it's well, just and also it's, to, it's what it is. To, to Dennis's point that he made earlier like if you get booked in a clean room you better work clean like That's you know if you're a comic comics underrate the value of being easy to work with mm. <laughs> you know? like, oh yeah well. Same. Like, I and mean, they, like, and like, comics, I, I comics to... don't, comics do not understand that as a booker, I talk to other bookers. Yeah, you know, sure. and and if if you were a jerk, guess what? I'm going to hear about it when I'm talking. If, if I'm calling saying, "Hey, have you ever worked with John Deming?" Oh yeah, he's great to work with. Okay, sure. great. Um, now, if I had phone calls, they're like, well, yeah, I worked with him one time and I'll never work with him again. And yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, so you part of that's respecting the room. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I like. I, it's good to hear that you say that because that's something that has been something that has been brought up. Like, oh, they can't, get, they can't control me and tell me what I don't want to do, what can and can't want to say. And I'm like, it's not that we're stopping you. We're not stopping you from if you want to do blue, go ahead and do blue. But in our room, what we're our product is clean right. comedy. So in my room, that's what I expect and that's what I want. OK, and the, those who are buying tickets, that's what they're expecting. That's what they want. So it's a it's a matter of being professional work as a businessman, a pro and bring the goods like don't. Don't feel like we're trying to stop anyone from being creative. No, it's another way to be able to uh, provide, number one, uh, another aspect, another avenue of your career to be able to do clean. It just opens more doors and you're able to do more, um, at least in, in, in what we see and how we, you know, we've had other comics that come through that have never done clean and now they're doing clean. And they're like, man, dude, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity because now I have more jokes to work with and I have more opportunity. And that's what we're trying to do. We want to build up these comics to give them tools to be able to work in a field that they've never been before to give them more opportunity. Yeah. And I don't know, man, it's like, if you're going to take someone's money, be honest about what you want it for. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah for real. Because I feel like one thing is like that a, a lot of comics do, and I have to resist this temptation all the time, is to just talk about my opinions on stuff as opposed <laughs> to writing jokes. <laughs> and I, this is my rule. My rule is if you want to turn your set into a TED Talk, if you have a great, funny, 
if you have a really funny 40 minutes, you've earned 20 minutes of a TED talk. Okay. <laughs> okay see, I respect that. See, like there's some comics that do that. They'll, they'll be like, okay, I got 45 minutes, right? And then, you yeah. know, they hit hard the first 15 and smacking everybody in the face and having a good time. Yeah. And then they want to, you know, pull out their little notes because they want to try a new joke. And I'm like, hey, this is the part how deep time. they are. Right, right. It's all like, and I don't mind that if you earn it. And right. if it's in moderation, but if That's you what sold I'm somebody ticket on the basis of it being a comedy show. That's what like, I'm don't saying. Don't lie to them. Right. <laughs> you know? Come on, man. You're preaching. No, that's good. That's good. That's exactly how we want to run it to where, you know, everybody's yeah. coming to see a good show. And so we're expecting you to bring your A game. Um, and, yeah. and you know, I don't want to see a crutch up there. I want to see you be yourself and bring your, your jokes and let them have a good time. Now, if they respect you and say, yeah, go ahead. Like, you know, you asking them and there's respect or mutual respect there. Cool. Do it. If the show's flowing and it's working great. But you know, if you're hearing moans, when you pull out your notebook, come on, man. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just like, just keep it pro and keep it, keep it the way, uh, just let it flow. And that's, that's kind of how we want to run it too as mm -hmm. well. So John, John, let me ask you this. You were talking about, uh, you know, when you kind of first got started there, uh, you, you know, you literally lived, uh, walking distance to the club in Provo. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you, you did, you start, I, I want to make sure I got the, the, the facts, right. Because I, I'm, I'm old and uh, sometimes I don't really pay attention. Uh, but, but you said, uh, that you, you started out, you were hosting shows there. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when it came to you hosting those shows, what was was there something that they kind of helped doing like any training to help prepare you to host? Or was that kind of you had to learn on the fly? Uh, what was kind of the process that you learned how to host shows? Oh, it's totally learning by doing. I mean, I only got the opportunity to host when they were filming because I – I wrote to him and I sent him a couple of clips of stuff that I had performed elsewhere. I was like, Hey, I'd love it if you'd give me a shot. And then, you know, they, uh, had a couple dates where they had to, didn't have a host. And so they, they tried me in, you know, totally just learn by doing and taking advantage of. Went up there, yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully you paid enough attention watching somebody else doing it. So that when you stepped up, you at least had, uh, the you know an idea of what to do, so it wasn't. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hosting's a different animal too, because yeah, you do your you do your act, but your main job is to to make the crowd excited for the next person that's coming on. Yeah, right. You know, if I have an hour, I can take certain risks and be like, okay, I'll try this new joke twenty minutes in when they already like me, and sandwich it in between a couple things I know work to see yeah. if it work. But when you have 10 minutes and then the headliner comes on, like you you have to go with your best stuff. You have to not mm -hmm. step on things that the other guy wants to talk about. You know, it's it's in a in a weird way, it's its own skill set, you know. Yeah. And you have to, you know, not that I'm you know, I'm not Robin Williams up there, right. but I'm also not Stephen Wright up there, you know, like especially <laughs> posting. Like you have to have a certain amount of of, of energy and a certain amount of uh, I don't know a certain vibe to get people excited or at least for me I don't I, don't, I can't speak to how other people no, that's good that's good all right uh, I actually want to jump on this question is a really good one too uh, piggybacking off of what we talked about Justin asks um, who's an example of a comic that you guys have met seen or what have you that has been able to do both styles well like clean and blue oh um Shane Smith. Shane Smith, um, okay. He, he's one of the biggest guys on, on Dry Bar. He has a couple of specials. Uh, they're very clean where he destroys the room, but he's not uh, an exclusively clean comic by any set, any stretch. Shane, uh, he's is he the guy with the, with all the tattoos? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. Jay Whitaker is another guy who can do both really, really well. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of dudes that I've worked with. Well, I've seen BT. Um, I met BT. And, um, and he does, yeah, he, you know, he did, he did dry bar and he did, you know, really great. And, and he also did Joker's comedy club downtown in Indy and we met him there and he did blue there too. And he killed and murdered there too. So he yeah. did both. Yeah. And, you know, and we talked to him about this, the, the ability to be able to work both too as well. So that was good. Yeah. 
Dennis Regan is a, Dennis Regan is a friend uh, that I you know I know uh, he can he can get off uh, in the blue weeds some but for the most type uh, he's really uh, yeah, he, he's he's pretty fun. he's pretty clean normally uh, but occasionally when he knows that he's got the latitude he doesn't mind going off into the, into the weeds and and uh, getting a little bit blue and mm -hmm. but uh, and and I would wouldn't hesitate uh, booking Dennis at, at you know on our yeah, main stage really. at, at Gutty's and you yeah. know if I could just get him to come this way, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think there, there's a certain threshold that you reach, and I don't know if I've reached it yet because I'm only five years in. But but a guy like Dennis who's been what thirty, 30 yeah. years, I mean, yeah. the guy's a total pro. Like, yeah, there's not a whole lot that's going to shake him, you know. So you you reach a certain point where you can you can kind of adapt to whatever. Yep. Yep, and that's that's the thing is being able to get to that place where you can do both. You can feel comfortable doing both, but you know, you again, that goes with for my personality. I'm more of a storyteller too as well when I did into my jokes mm -hmm. that I just feel like I can throw some in there but it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't fit. You know what I mean? Um and then of of course and then you also got to read the read the crowd like it, depending on where you go. And what the crowd yeah. to, to see and hear, then you could be like, all right, these guys are a little rowdy, so I can I can go in a little bit just to get them, mm -hmm. you know, with me. Or you know, they're just they walked in all like, oh, you know, oh my gosh, this guy's over there. I, ooh, look at him. And it's like very straightforward. You know, okay, you know, if you don't read the crowd or at least the room before you jump on a little bit. That way you can kind of get an idea of, okay, I'm going to start off with this joke or I'm just going to come out and bust them in the face, depending on where you're at, you know, mm -hmm. so at least in my opinion, uh, in my experience, that's, that's kind of how I look at it and I view it. Yeah. Well, it's a relationship too, right? Like the more they trust you, the more you can trust them. Right. You know, Back to what like, we're there, there's a give and take. I think the, the best shows that I've seen, it's there is some reciprocity there where like the audience comes in with a good mindset and they're ready to laugh and they're ready to go wherever the the comic's going to take them the comic runs with that and yeah you know builds up that um that authority or whatever you want to call it right and, and i just need to i just need to go on the do any kind of room you know i need to go on the record and and uh let you steve i didn't know that he used those big 25 cent words yo uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lou, he uh, reciprocity, he, and I, first time I heard that was on a Lauren Hill album. Lauren <laughs> Hill, education. Yeah, some reciprocity. That's, that's, I was like, oh, I like that. I like that word. What, what's that word? But yeah, that, that's that the first time. I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm baffled. I didn't know that uh, uh, comedians use those big words. He told me that he wouldn't use swear words, but he didn't say he would use those big words. And so I, <laughs> I, I apologize. Know, that, could be, that could be vulgar. Right. I, apo <laughs> I apologize in that's advance. My, that's cause... my silver bullet. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. You come out yeah. them. All my cursing is too Shakespearean for right. anyone to pick it up. <laughs> Everybody that, that's brilliant. That's all I'm going to say. That's brilliant. Really? <laughs> Yeah, I have a tell. It's really subtle. I go into a, a an upper crust British accent when I curse. If you listen <laughs> real hard, you can tell. <laughs> well, all righty then. Yeah, bro. <laughs> this was up. <laughs> so, John, let me ask you this: when you're when you're writing, uh, mm -hmm. are you uh, are you know you know a like pen and paper type of guy? You write with your computer. Uh, kind of what's yeah. what's kind of your the the foundational. Uh, process that you, I don't want you to give away your secrets by all means, but what's your process when it comes to writing for your, your comedy? Um, I mean, I've used all sorts of methods. Um, I feel like when I've been my most productive Google docs are a big one because you can edit in real time and save it. Finally, uh, I'm a big Google docs guy. When I write. <laughs> Um, we are kin, bro. We are kin. I've, I've been trying to transfer them over to you know what OneNote is. Yes. Yep. 
I've been trying to transfer everything into a OneNote so I can have like a, a big journal. It has not been successful. No, nah, uh, yeah, OneNote is, I mean, um, Evernote was another one that was kind of like at first was, you know, making a big deal. But then I, when I went over to Google Docs, my life changed, bro. Because I was able to put everything color coded. I'm just weird like that. And, and you know, every time I talk to everybody else, you know, they write pen and paper. That's fine. But for me, I got to have it structured, man. Otherwise, I can't really see the joke um as yeah. i go along so for me getting them google docs set up and i got like just i'm weird like that i know i get it but uh um, rhythm to pen and paper though that can be really helpful oh yeah oh yeah and well i've switched from pen and paper because i can't read my writing to okay. to straight you know just uh audio on my phone and so if i'm you know if i'm sitting back and i, I would rather just talk it out because i can hear it in my voice as far as how I would say it, because when I'm writing, I kind of don't, I don't write like how I talk. So it's kind of weird because I can't put the ums and ahs in there. Yeah. It'll be weird. But when I'm, when I'm recording myself, then I'm just like, okay, this, this sounds like I can, I can go with that. And it makes it a little bit, uh, at least realistic to me when I hear it. Yeah. You know what the, the really helpful thing about writing it with pen and paper is though, since writing takes effort, you find yourself getting rid of words you don't need. Good point. Just because you don't want to have to write, to go through the effort to write. It. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, you're right. I will, and I will say this: as the old guy that has to has a hard time remembering stuff, when yeah. I take when I take time to write it out by hand, um, it drives it into the memory deeper for right. me. And so, literally, I will gather material. I, you know, I I voice text on my phone. I record stuff. I. I sit at my laptop. I do all all of those things yeah. when I'm when I'm gathering material, but when I'm honing in a joke, I take time to write it out to make sure that uh, I get the word economy aspect of it, and mm -hmm. I get the 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 verbiage, the, the 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 pacing of it, everything down. And by writing it out by hand, it, to me that is the as I hone into the final product of a joke. That's what I'm doing. So that it drives it deeper into the memory bank for an old guy like yeah. me. But isn't so, that like isn't yeah. that like scientific as well? Isn't that where if you write and you say it and you're thinking about it all at the same time, it just kind of I don't know creates some kind of weird chemical reaction. Hopefully, that's what our school system's <laughs> based on. So let's hope so. <laughs> exactly. <bro. laughs> Otherwise, I took a lot of notes in middle school and I failed for no good reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That's good. That's good, man. But it does work for me. And I, you know, when you're my age, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be happy that you can actually write. Right. Well, let me ask you this. Cause I know Steve, you said that you're more of a storyteller. What about you, Dennis? Cause I feel like I don't do a whole lot of stories. Mine are almost like essays, you know, like, yeah, I like, right, usually right. like a plot to the joke. It's just like different points about something. Right. I, I think I have a mixture of mm -hmm. just uh, just off cuff the you know off the cuff thoughts that really go nowhere, sure. uh, and then and then I've got stories that I you know I get into where you know I'm I'm t particularly I've got a whole chunk of material because I have multiple sclerosis and so I've got a, a bunch of material where I talk about having MS and it's kind of a a, a story thread of material yeah. that I use. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so there are pieces that become kind of a story thread, and then I throw in the off-the-cuff thoughts that just have nothing. There, there's no connectivity. There's no real segue. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, yeah, because I'm old and I bounce around, that's kind of my ADHD kicks in, and, and I'm just, oh, I just had a thought about this, and then I go on to something else. And uh, But right. for, the most, for the most part, I think there's a lot of storytelling and meandering. Right. Because I, I think one of the reasons that it's so hard for me, and I apologize to the audience if we're getting way too inside baseball with the <laughs> No, that's all good, man. Keep it rolling. That's all good. Uh, the, 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 the reason I feel like it's really hard for me to make stories funny is like it's a pacing thing. I can't get the pacing right, I especially know. when it's like characters talking to each other. Yep. All that pacing that I haven't figured out yet. Okay. Yep. Doesn't... Yeah. And that's kind of that's kind of how I roll too as well. I, I got characters that I do within it, and it's it's yeah. like I know you said earlier too as well, where you know you don't want to step over any comics jokes and stuff. But to be yeah. honest with you, every single time I know nobody has the same jokes as I do because of yeah. the, just because of the fact that 
it's original and it's it's like it's authentic to me and my life. And there's no way. I mean, it may be like very general as far as might have a few things that are similar, but when it comes to the joke being what it is, it's, there's no way that it's, it's, ver, it's, it can't be verbatim just because of the fact that right. the way I create it, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. so that way it's, it's authentic to me. So I don't have to worry about if I'm stepping over anything. I may talk about the same type of topic, you know, where I'm like, okay, I'm talking about dogs or something like that. Or, you know, but in, in that story or in that joke uh, or in that piece, that chunk that I got, I, I just know that there's no way that, you know, it, you know, it, it, there's any kind of uh, connection that's very similar. Um, unless we just say, okay, you both were talking about dogs. That's probably as close as you're going to get. Everybody talking about dogs. But for me, it's a lot easier to just come out with these original uh, characters and I'm able to jump back and forth between the two. Um, and, and that's one of those things that, Quite honestly, when when I'm teaching uh, comedy college, I'm always stressing to young comics: if you write with authenticity to truly who you are, and the material is coming from what you know and what you've experienced, mm -hmm. there's nothing new under the sun. So you're not it's it, you're going to have the days where your your premise is going to be a neighboring premise to somebody somebody else already has done, right? But when you when you bring from your vantage point and you're bringing it from you within you, yeah. You only there's only one person that can be you, and that's you. So when you bring you out in the story, you know it's going to be original, and the authenticity of it is going to put you in a place where nobody else is going to touch it because it's truly you. Now, if somebody steps up and they say, "I want to pretend and do a, a bit like." Steve Rivera's mm -hmm. I can't pull off Steve Rivera on stage because I am not uh, a, a wily uh, Puerto Rican right. uh, you know no matter how much I try I've right. tried and and I can't do it yeah you try and do it, no. <laughs> no but I hear you that's exactly it. <laughs> why do I have a feeling we're about to get canceled <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, bro! Be careful. Watch what you not the one who used the phrase "wily Puerto Rican." Said wily. He's a wily Puerto Rican. No, nah, I mean that. That's that's it, man. Is is I know Steve. I know Steve personally. I can tell you, oh. he's. <laughs> he's um, <laughs> yeah, but I think what helped me um, is the fact that I've I've done improv as well, so yeah. I'm able to, you know, use a little bit of improv when I'm on stage. And knowing your environment and then knowing the setup, like if you create a story and you're, you're telling a story, you want to set it up. And the, for me, uh, what I do is I like to go up there and I like to make it more of like my living room when I'm hanging with my family. And so I like to bring everybody into my living room and hang out because that's where I'm the most comfortable is when I'm kicking it with my people. So yeah. when I'm kicking with my people, I like to bring them in. And so there's there's parts of my my set where I'm able to bring in different people in the audience to my to my uh, joke, and so it kind of gives them that interaction. And so because of that interaction, it makes them kind of chill, and they're able to just relax. And then it's almost like, yo, we're brothers now. You know, it's like, yo, we're sisters now because yeah. of the fact that we're in it. So because I had that, com I'm, I'm comfortable with that uh, that approach at least. Um, I'm able to say, oh, bro, look, last week my mom said this, and I jumped right into how she sounds, right. you know, and it's easy for, for them to just see it. I'm able to create that character. Part of it. And yeah. that, then they start wanting you to succeed, which is the right. best place you can be. Right, yeah. exactly. Because they, they're they rooting for you. To be honest with you, it's like if you come with a really good setup and you got a good set and they're seeing what you're creating, they're rooting for you. They really are, especially for at yeah, Guddies too. At Guddies for sure. They they they're rooting for you, and but at the same time they're kind of like, okay, let's see if you can pull it off because we do have some people that come in that are you know comedy connoisseurs, so they they want to be able to you know they want to be able to laugh and say, oh that's very intellectual yeah, that's a good joke you know and I get it, but at the same time you know they're very forgiving. You know, you throw that out there and be like, okay, that, that joke didn't work. Sorry, I'm going to put that in my pocket and I'm going to start this next one. And they kind of root for you, especially if you're doing like parodies and song parodies and stuff and you kind of fumble on it. You're like, I'm going to start this again. Everybody kind of goes, okay, go. And then when you're done with your song, they're like, yay. So they'll, you know, they, they root for you. They, they want you to win. They want to see you succeed. Yeah. I don't think and, for those, and for those of you who are keeping score, uh, that was Steve kind of pointing out the fact that uh, Hoss Ridgeway uh, <laughs> was, doing, <laughs> was, was doing one of his own songs that he had written and then completely forgot the Listen. words 
and oh. forgot the forgot the flow of the song and had to start to over but three look, different three different times before he actually got it. Yeah, and then the audience really cheered. Yeah, and he did that. He that same song he did like a hundred times before. And I, I get it. I've been there. I've been there once where like that same joke that you like, you know, 100% I'm going to jump on this and it's going to be great. And it just, boom, gone. And you just, just deer in the headlights. You're like, oh my God, the joke. What is, how does it start? And so he went on there, he did it. And he was, I mean, he was still a pro. He went on there, he did it every time he fumbled. It was funny. And everybody at the end, when he was done with it, he was like, yes. And they were like, yeah. So the whole crowd jumped up and, or not jumped up, but they, they were just like, you know, they, they cheered for him because he was able to complete it. Yeah, they, it was it was truly that pity cl clap. They were like, "Oh, yay!" The thanks, no thanks. They were excited about him. There yeah. were some that were kind of like, "Ah," but you know, <laughs> still, you know, they were like, "Good I'm, job, bro, you I'm, did." I'm thinking like the sports movie slow clap, where it starts out slow and then they <laughs> starts. That's yeah, really in my head when you were describing it. I was just really hoping that's what they did. Right, like it's almost like you know, five seconds, five beats hit after he's done. He's just staring at the crowd yeah. and. It was, it was more like golf clap, you know. Man, I was good. It was good. It was I, good. The worst when you forget, like the joke that you're most excited about. Yes. Oh, I hate yes. it. Yes. And <laughs> bro, because you have to like, you feel like you have to explain to the audience why you just wasted their time. Yes. <laughs> yes, dude, that is so bad. If you don't point it out, then it's it's wor It's the worst. When you don't point it out, then it's like they know it, and you know in the back of your head, like, man, they know that I jacked this up because you knew this is this is something that I'm gonna hit them in the face with, and then you totally forgot about it. Like, man, I'm gonna let that joke go. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the 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 fun part is when you do a great set and you get home, yeah. and you re and and that's when you remember, oh. I was going to do that new bit. I had it all prepared. It was it was like the, it, it was the golden nugget that I was kind of saving back there, and you completely forgot to pull it out. So then you're like, uh, "Can I come back and do that again, please?" Do the bit. Yep. Yep. I don't know if you guys agree. You you might not. To me, my favorite thing is when I try something for the first time and it works. No. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. One hundred percent. Thing in comedy is. When something works right away, because it usually doesn't. Yeah, exactly. But right away, it's it's like magic, right? And you just pumped because you're like, oh, I'm gonna bring this back. <laughs> you don't even know whether or not it's gonna work next time, but still, that that it's a it's yeah that adrenaline when it hits you, you're like, oh my gosh, that actually worked. Yeah. I refer to those to those moments as the cocaine moment, uh, <laughs> and, and and for people who've never never done cocaine, like and and made I I I haven't. Um, I haven't even tried okay. coffee. Well, I yeah, remember. But I will. I will say that you know you you tried it that first time, and then for the rest of your life, you're trying to seek out that feeling again. When you have a joke that goes that well the first time, the rest of your life, you're trying to hit it the same way because you want to feel that jazz again. You want to you want to get that jolt, yeah. and and so yeah, it's. I would uh, say the same feeling is when you have a, an amazing set, and you go up there, and you you're 15, 20 minutes hit, you know, thirty minutes in, and you you're punching everybody in the face and everybody's having a great time dude that feeling just gets you hooked and it's not always like that it's not always going to be like that and that's the thing about comedy is it's not always going to even with the greats even with the greats they don't always hit 100 percent. but you know you can hold on to that one and go okay i know i got what it takes to be able to be good and sometimes you're going to find a crowd and sometimes you're not going to find a crowd so have you let's say for for you um one of the comics that we've interviewed and on the show, his name is uh, Mario Tori, and he's done shows with you know um, Kevin Hart and everybody. So I asked he, I asked him, you know, what's the best advice about for comics that you know are just are in the game and they're working it and they're and they're going through in their city. He's like, get out of your city, leave your city, and see how well your comedy does outside of your home. So I wanted to ask you have have you traveled to other spots and and been able to get a different response every time obviously it's a different response but what i mean by that is like have you ever have been able to get above the whole okay i'm done with my people here now i can take this on the road and try it somewhere else um well that's kind of the the phase that i'm in right now is trying to transition into 
to working the road more and trying to, to do more stuff uh, to eventually be able to do this full time. Mm. Uh, it is interesting. I Before before my wedding, I, I went back and stayed with my folks in New York for a while. Okay. Uh, and I found that a lot of the stuff that I had written while I was living in Utah when I was in school, it was stuff that worked in Utah. And there, there's a very specific culture yep. and a specific set of things that you know about if you're from there. So, you know, I've had to, like, I used to have, like, 15 minutes on on religion because it's it's utah it's like a yep. very religious place and like yep. that and has a very specific culture yeah uh, and now like half of it i've either thrown out or you know what have you but um you know it is interesting to, to go on the road and see what works for for everybody and, and what works kind of in general i'm, I'm kind of in that place too bro i mean to, to yeah. bring in you know just my just my background alone, you know, I grew up in Chicago. And so, and my, my background is I grew up in a Pentecostal home. So my father was a preacher. And, yeah. And so I had a ton of material of that, whereas it's not church stuff. But, right. but then it's like, okay, I'm coming to Indiana now and I'm opening up a club in Indiana and I can't be talking about, you know what I mean? Like, how can I take my creativity oh, you, as yeah. a you know, as a, as, as a Puerto Rican to be able to, you know, let them relate. And it's all, it's, it's just being yourself. Really. It's got to a place where just be myself and, you know, like it or not, my personality is what it is, but at the same time, you still got to be creative. Uh, so that it's, I, usually, it's usually not the whole joke. You got to change just the way you set it up and the way you frame it. That's it. You know, that's it. Yeah. It's usually just, that's usually the, right. the big thing. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, to use your example, like I grew up, I don't think there were any Pentecostal churches near where I grew up. I grew up like upstate New York. Everybody's Catholic. Most right. Like, I was like, you know, um, like I was the only kid that went, that was in my church in my entire graduating class. Like it was like, everybody was, was Catholic. They had a, like Catholics and Methodists were like all that it was. <laughs> so like go up there and tell a bunch of, you know, Pentecostal jokes or Mormon jokes or whatever, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got to, you got to give people an idea of what you're talking about in order to sell that. Right. In the same way that like, you know, now I'm living in Seattle, like, you know, the idea of, of being from, from out East and all those things that are different, you know, if people don't understand what your premise is and they don't understand the things you're referencing, then they're not going to laugh. That's a good point. Like the Will Smith yeah. thing. I was like, you haven't heard of Will yeah. Smith. You're not going to get a Will Smith joke. And and I hear that the uh, the people up there in Seattle are are real woke. They've got a lot of uh, Pentecostal <laughs> Catholic churches. <laughs> <laughs> I, very well be. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to tell you once they open them back up. <laughs> but see, the thing see. is, it's funny. I, I don't even necessarily mind being politically correct for the same reason that I don't mind being clean. Mm. It's like I, I'm I'm totally okay with people telling me no in life, <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, I, I, to be perfectly honest, like, I don't necessarily mind there being rules to what I do. Okay. Um, for the most part, I just do what I can stand by, uh, what I can stand by. Okay. You know? But at the same time, like, I'm performing in an art form that's meant to be enjoyed by other people. So, like, what other people think has to matter a little bit. Right. Right. You know? Right. Um, now, I'm not going to, I don't. I don't try to pander, you know, I try to do what I do and, and hope people like it. But like, I don't know. I feel like making those small concessions to people and showing them that like you care about those sorts of things goes a long way when you're trying to get them to on board with some of the stuff that you care about. Okay. So then it would be wise to, to do your homework before you go perform at that state. So, you know, what they're yeah. all about, knowing the temperature, who they are, you know what I mean? Like what is happening in that area? Like, for example, you Seattle, right? You said so you're, you're in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what's happening over there? Like that whole thing of, uh, was it Antifa, whatever, taking over and all that. Like how <laughs> are you close by there? Or is that something that you have experienced there? Or is that something you uh, write about? Yesterday, my wife and I drove there to check it out. Yeah. It's it's so much smaller than I thought. <laughs> okay, exactly. Okay. My wife was like, they said it's a zone. It's more like a soccer field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Somebody's backyard. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's, 
It's, it's just like an inconveniently placed block party. Okay. <laughs> That's so crazy. Or people in tents. <laughs> I was well, kind of disappointed. I thought I'd see some crazy stuff. Right. Right. It's just uh, really it, bad house it, party. So. It all depends on, on what time you're watching the news. You know. Right, and, wh and where you're watching. Right? <laughs> yeah. See, and that's what I'm talking about. Taking a, a, a topic like that mm -hmm. and being able to joke about that is where that where we as comics have to at least get smart about to be able to share that so that it's almost like, you know, it's like a, the elephant in the room. It's like you want to talk about it, but you're scared to talk about it. Everybody's scared to talk about it. They're scared to talk about what's happening. and yeah. But yet at the same time, you know, you got to be smart because then you don't want them to be like, boo, you know, like you suck, like immediately you're just shutting it down. Like some comics just jump right in and punch people in the face with it. And it's like, yo, slow down. You got to, yeah. you got to do it smart, you know, cause you know, down yeah. here in Indiana, obviously, you know, we're uh, at least in this area, there's a lot of church goers. There's a lot of Trump supporters. So you got to understand the area before you start throwing blows, because then you got people down right. in Bloomington, which is further down in in Indiana, where you know they're a little bit more liberal, more you know, um, just right. loose down there, and they're able to say stuff that's you know that wouldn't be appropriate up here. So you got to do your homework, but at the same time, get creative and be able to be brave or bold enough to talk about them. I'm all yeah. I'm a fan of anyone who's clever in taking that because you can watch the greats and you can see how they take it, like especially Dave Chappelle. Like you, you, you can see how they take a certain subject and a topic and be able to talk about that even though they're saying what they're saying and still in, and you're engaged. Yeah. You know, that's, that, well, that's that creativity. I think uh, one comic that I kind of started out um, really admiring, he once said, uh, you know, the best, the best comedy is the type of comedy that can change people's minds. I actually don't agree with that. Mm. I think the best comedy is where you don't have to agree to laugh. Where it's like, okay. if a joke is if a joke is so well written that you don't agree with it, but you have to laugh. To me, that's like the pinnacle. That's good. There's, there's some people whose minds you're not gonna change. Some people maybe, you know. Yeah. But if if I can get up there and you know, giving the, using the same example, I've been I've been struggling because I've been wanting to talk about it because it seems like it's what everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. It's like what the only thing anybody wants to talk about. But I've been struggling with the fact that I don't think anything I have to say is all that interesting about it. Okay. Like, I've point. come up with a couple of things. Um, but it's just I, strong, right? Not strong enough. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like it's either stuff other people have said before or it's just I haven't, I haven't found a way into it to make it funny yet. With a couple exceptions, yeah. But that's that's why I say like you make concessions to the audience so that you can get something in return. If you want to make a, a political point point that they're not going to agree with, yeah. And you know you're taking that risk. Make a couple concessions to them to make them feel comfortable, to make them like you, so that they'll trust you enough to go that go to that place with you. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why I talk about it being like a mutual relationship, mm. where like, you know. You know, I may have some jokes that lean to the right or to the left or, or in a different position than, than you think politically mm -hmm. or to talk about things that might be a little bit sensitive where I talk about like mental illness or like, right. you know, politics or religion or whatever. Um, but I recognize that if I'm going to ask the, the, the audience to endure that discomfort and to take that risk, then I have to give them something in return which is to write a good joke, but also to make them comfortable and acknowledge that, that, that I'm actually asking something of them. Okay. You know? And I think, I think part of it is you've got to build the rapport with the audience in such a way that yeah. not, not only do they trust you, but they believe you. Yeah. And, it, that, and again, it goes back to that authenticity of they believe that you're not just trying to get them to go on a journey that you really haven't gone on yourself and they, and you're right. just trying yeah, to, you're me. trying to blow smoke up their skirt. You know, yeah. you got to be true and honest with it. And then when you've built that rapport and you, and you've come to them with that, with honesty and they trust you, they'll go with you on that journey. And right. they'll, they, they may not enjoy the journey itself, but they, they'll enjoy the destination that you take them to. Right. 
because the, the funny thing about the funny thing that I think about comedy, like at its best, when I most enjoy it, is that there, it's relaxing, but it's also exciting, mm. right? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, like when you when you hear something that is like, oh, I didn't think I'd ever hear somebody say that, and it makes you laugh. There's something that you you, you kind of look around, and it's it's. It's almost like being on a roller coaster where yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. this is okay. Exactly. But it's the same kind of fun as being on a roller coaster. But also right. people come there to relax and get away from stuff. So you have to strike a balance there. You do. You and know? here's the thing about what we rock here at Gutties is the fact that we got people that have never been to a comedy club. Right. If it's a clean comedy club. They come in there. They're like, oh, I've never been to one. This is great. And then you got comics that'll come up and they do something a little, they'll push the envelope a little bit. And it's like, oh, I would never. You know, I would have never mm -hmm. said that, you know, and it's like we're working with some people like that. We got other people that come in and they love it. They're just like, right. I, just got, I got a new place to come and hang out without being tempted. And, you know, without any kind of craziness that's out there, they just love to be able to come in and have a good time and not worry. And so yeah. we're dealing with a huge demographic versus us, just a specific demographic where it's like, you know, those who want to come in and just see some, just want to get rowdy and just be silly. So you know, get drunk and get stupid and then go home. Like there's a different, there's a different setup that we got going on here. And so it's, it's very challenging yeah. sometimes for some comics who, who are used to just the crowd that are just rowdy and they get like three, four beers in them. And they're like, oh, well, now I can, you know, I can rip on these mugs. It's different mm -mm. because now everybody's sober. Right. And everybody's just, they're right. listening to you. Right. And it's like, oh, I got to make this where you guys really see what I'm talking about. And you're with me. And, right. and throughout the whole time. So you can't, I mean, you have that challenge, especially at the club where you're, you're going to, you're going to meet. I mean, cause we had like a whole volleyball team come in, like a high school volleyball team, a girls, a high school, you know, high school girls that came a whole squad. And it's like, how do you, how do you, how do you do your jokes to that? And then, you know, you have a, and then we had a whole uh, Franklin college, the whole college students came through and did their, it's like, there's so many different, um, the demographic is different. And so we reach all ages, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. you know, have kids in the, in the audience, you got to kind of adjust it a little bit. And some comics are a little bit like, Oh, I don't know if I'm a, I can't do kids. Well, this is where you practice that. I mean, you got to get used right. to that. You don't know, you know, at any well, point. The, the problem with kids in the audience isn't even the kids. The right. kids are fine. Right. It's the parents. It's the, right. when you're in front of your kids, you know, you can't laugh at everything. That's true. That is true because you're kind of like that was funny, but I, I don't want my son to know what that means. <laughs> it's the same thing as like it's it's the same challenge you have if you work like private events for a company, where it's like mm. you're working against the idea that like not it's not just do I think this is funny is do I think I can laugh at this in front of my boss? <laughs> you know, that's good. That's true. You know, that's that that's true. one of the unique challenges that you that you have in that kind of an audience, and also like. Anytime you take the risk of marketing something in a certain way, you get a certain audience, mm. you know, and I think one of the challenges of working clean is in some ways it's like, it's like when you like the grocery store that I used to work for in high school, their whole brand was their customer service. Mm. Like, Our customer service is awesome. And when that happens, sometimes you get people who come in there just so they can be disappointed by the customer service they were promised. Yeah, so they can them. Yep, I got you. And it's it's the same thing. Sometimes you can get people who come there specifically to interrogate. Is this really clean enough? Right. And but it, like it's it's that way. Anytime you you take the risk to market yourself in a certain way, right? If you market yourself as like I'm the guy who's politically incorrect, then there are going to be people who are like you didn't go far enough. <laughs> yes. You know. Yes. So like anytime you pick a lane, you're going to get the best and the worst parts of being in that lane. Yep. You know? Yep. That's 100%. That's exactly where we're at and what we're dealing with. When we put that product out there, we're like, oh, really family friendly? Really wasn't really family friendly? Or, yeah. um, you know, like just the fact I'm sure, that I'm sure you have lots of stories of weird complaints that you've gotten. We, you know, it's, it's, it's I, honestly, we had only a few. It's not as much as I thought we were going to get uh, because it's cool. Comments, they kind of pushed it, which was great. They kind of pushed it a little bit and it was like, okay, that was, bro, you went, you know, let's sure. try to, but, you know, only a couple of people were like, well, the, they were more like, we knew what he meant by that. And we kind of said this and it's okay, but they kind of like brushed it off. It wasn't like they made a gotcha. big, big thing. The, what well, we good. Did, I'm glad. Well done, Indiana. 
Right, exactly. Well and done. Exactly. Thank you. Right. But and this next this next weekend, we'll try to uh, conjure up just a few of the uh, the real <laughs> hardcore. Uh, yeah, they come through. We'll bust in all of the. I, no, honestly, the, the the crazy thing is the fact that we've actually been have we're we're uh, facing the whole fact that we did clean comedy. Like we're we're we face that yeah. more of you know of oh I can't say certain things or what what do you guys describe as clean comedy what's your you know what's your take that was more of the conversation of we're not a real club because we do clean and so that yeah. was more of the the banter that was going back and forth is the fact that we're not a real club because we don't do we don't do and I'm like I get it I've seen who you guys booked you're a real club. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, we're, we're, we're and, and the great real thing, comics, right? Right. It's almost like, come on, guys. But I get it. I get what they're saying. I understand where their their stance, and I get it because everybody's subjective, right? All comedy, you know, we may not like my comedy, but they love Dennis comedy, and it's like, and right. vice versa. The, the funny thing to me is when these people they they roll through and they're like. uh well, I don't think, you know, corporate comedy is real comedy or clean comedy is not real comedy. Yeah. I, and I want to go to them. Well, uh, don't tell anybody else because I don't want anybody expecting me to give their money back because that's yeah. pretty much that's pretty much how I bought my truck and my house. And <laughs> I sent my son to college. I, I'm not giving people their money back. So don't let them know right. what I have done. Right. And, and <laughs> made money where I've made money for the last 25 years. I don't want them thinking they're getting their money back, you know? Right. But right. also like the silver lining of, of that is like, well, that's not my audience. Like, I don't, I don't want people there that aren't my crowd. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you that's your audience. And yeah. if, if somebody's not down with what you do, it's like, it's like we've been saying, like there's only so much you can concede to what other people want. You still got to be you. Right. You know? And if you're lean, and if if your lane is that like we want to do, you know, a family friendly show, mm -hmm. then like if people aren't down with that, then like I don't know what to exactly. tell you. It's, I, exactly. I told you what I was doing. Exactly. It's like you know we're established this way. We've established it already. We've got people coming yeah. in that that support it. For so sure. it's it's like you know you either do it or not. And it, uh, here's the thing: is the great thing is vice versa to those the you know clubs that do that do blue. They want comedy yeah. that cuss and get crazy. So, you know, if they if they say to me, all right, I need you to get blue. I need you to throw this in, man. Go in on them. And I don't. Then it's like, uh, I don't even know if I can do this show. You know, it's just knowing and being a professional in it is what I'm asking. Just know your lane. Yeah. And if, it, if you can rock it, great. If you can't, then be honest, you know, and be like, no, I can't do that. So, John, let me ask you this. Uh, what's next for you? I mean, besides coming to the greatest uh, comedy club <laughs> in the entire universe, Gunny's Comedy Club, uh, what's yeah. what's what's kind of on the uh, the radar for where you, what you've got coming up, what you got plans for, what's what's coming up next for uh, for John Deming? Well, apparently, this was news to me, but apparently you announced I have a special coming out. Hey! Well, <laughs> hey. No, hey. No, uh, no better time to release a special than when you haven't been on stage in three months. <laughs> no, <bro. laughs> you, gotta, you gotta throw it um, up here like the greats, man. Just do it. Uh, right now, I'm I'm trying to write a show. Um, it's still very much in the embryonic stages. Uh, I only have uh, what I'm going to do this weekend. I only have a couple minutes from that, um, just because it's uh, it's yeah, the works. Um, I have a couple of friends that have some projects. Nothing that's that's really taken off yet. I'm mostly trying to get my footing in a new city uh, and trying to get on the road and work the road. You know, and um, I'm sort of in the like I said, I'm kind of in the in the mode of transitioning, and and that's one of the hardest things is transitioning from from being a local guy to, to work in the whole country, and that's, that's kind of where I'm, yep. where I'm looking at right now. Well then uh, we're happy that we can play a part of getting you out yeah. of Seattle and get you on the road yeah. and uh, to have you come rolling through Gutty's Comedy Club this next weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. We are, we're looking forward to uh, a lot of fun, and, and hopefully uh, people will uh, stop listening to the news that says, uh, hey, all of Indiana's numbers are going down, but the people in Arizona, they're dying, so you guys are going to die too, so stay yeah. home, you know. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully they'll all, you know, we'll get some folks out and then we'll have yeah. a great crowd uh, so we can have some fun and laugh, you know, because uh, 
ultimately, uh, laughter is the best medicine. And, and uh, I say it all the time. Gutty's wants to be the uh, laughter pharmacy. So, yeah. Yeah. Come, come get your laugh sure. on and uh, be safe for sure. You know? Right. Yeah. Just be, <laughs> if you, be smart. If you, if you got a fever, maybe don't come out. <laughs> right. Exactly. You got the stuff. Yeah, exactly. Be smart. You know? Yeah, we you definitely know. want you to be safe, but at the same time, we want you to be here to enjoy the life. Be responsible, but yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I'm very yeah. happy to, you know, I'm very excited to be coming through, seeing a new crowd, working a cool club. You know, I'm excited about it. We're excited for you, man, too, as well. So I'm, I'm glad. Thank you so much for that, for your time and yeah. your talent, bro. And I'm looking forward to even, even after the show to be able to connect with you and, and making sure that, you know, we... We keep this uh yeah. this thing rolling because we need it, man. We all need it. For sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Sure. This has been fun. Well, we it. will we will see you this weekend and uh, you, everybody get a hold of you, man. Are you on you pretty much on social media, right? You John Deming? Yeah. Um uh Facebook and Instagram at John Deming Comic. Um <laughs> that's that's what it is for now. Um uh, working on getting some stuff on on youtube and other stuff but it's not quite up yet so cool those are the best ways to get in touch with me bet and then make sure you watch his uh dry bar special too as well you want to go ahead and watch that and, and, and get as many views and share with, with as many people too as well yeah uh okay. they, have, they put a couple clips out for free on youtube so if you just go on youtube and search my name and dry bar comedy awesome. a couple clips share them around and and uh and do all that stuff all that helps awesome Thanks again, man. I appreciate it, man. And uh, you guys have be safe and uh, Same. see you this weekend, bro. Yeah, see you this weekend. All right. Take care. All right. That was a dope show. That was great, man. I'm looking forward to getting to hang with uh, with John for the weekend. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, he just to when, when you sit down like this and you talk to a guy, you get to hear his viewpoints. Uh, it when his thoughts resonate with where you truthfully are walking and trying to trying to put things for the club, I think he's going to be a great fit and uh, and it's going to be a just a fantastic weekend. It's always man, and and I love the fact that we're bringing we're bringing them in, we're bringing them to Gutties, and I got it's like we got to let Greenwood and and the surrounding areas know. Look, you guys are missing out some really great shows. You got to make sure you come through. Download our mobile app. It's so easy to do. Uh, it's so that's why we did it. That's why I created it because of the fact that of the ease of use. And so, download the app, get the tickets, watch Gutty's TV, uh, stay notified, make sure the notifications are set, and um, and support um, live comedy too as well. We got a lot of great stuff that's coming up, man. Our first year anniversary is coming up. And a lot of great stuff is being lined up. We got uh, even even after uh, John comes and bl and drops it on everybody this weekend, um, a weekend after for the Fourth of July, we got Leslie Norris Townsend coming into as well. We got Clint Hall, and if you have been to uh, Gutties and you've seen Clint Hall, y'all know he brings the funny too as well. So I mean, we got a lot of great comics that yeah. are gonna be coming through. And a lot of new stuff that's going to be coming out for Gutties too as well. So um, I'm stoked, man. I'm excited that we're able to get back and getting this, you know, getting uh, laughters back out in the, out in everybody's hearts and bellies. Oh, and in July is just jam packed with some great shows too. Yeah, yeah man. We you get, know, right, right, exactly. July is going to be dope, man. Um, I'm just, I know. I mean, we, uh, and unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to do this all off of my memory. Uh, but I know, uh, I know we got, uh, Warren B Hall coming in. Warren he B. was, Hall, dude. he was scheduled to come, uh, when COVID kind of shut things down, we were able to get him to roll back through. Um, and then we, we've got Christmas in July. That's going to be dope because, because we got Santa, right? We actually, Santa Claus is coming to do nope. a, a couple minutes of comedy but during Christ, comedy. Christmas in July exactly. at the club. And it's going to be, it's going to be a blast. And so, so jokes. Yeah, so I'm telling you, July is is going to be a great month, and uh, yeah. not just because uh, the world is starting to reopen, uh, and and we're and we're doing everything safely. You know, right. trust me, right. we've 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 spread out the room, we've re reset the tables so that people can be setting with social distancing in mind. Yeah, and and right. and we and we go out, we go in, and we wipe the tables, and and everything gets wiped down, and uh, you know we. We clean the microphone so that, you know, 
when John comes in and, and spits on it, uh, we'll clean that off so that nobody's going to get sick. Right. I, I don't want people getting the Deming disease, uh, whatever that might, whatever, whatever that might be. I don't know. But this guy, we'll, this, we'll, bro, and then the thing is, well, the great thing about it too is, well, if you want to support Gutties, we can also uh, we provide this what's called the Gutties Tubi, which is like a mask too as well that has the Gutties logo on it. You want to look cool. Of course, you got to rock the Gutties Tubi. And we also have regular masks, too, as well. So both will both get, you know, everybody's safe and it's all good. We provided that for you. So that way, if you want to rock Gutties. Now, let's be honest. We didn't provide it. We, we've we provided we, people who can buy them. We're, we're not providing. Right. We're not giving this stuff away, we folks. It's just for you to support us. I want to make sure because Steve's over here is like, hey, we're going to provide. No. I'm not giving it the house. No, I'm not uh, I'm 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 the old guy that wants the money because I'm a greedy capitalist. I'll be honest, and uh, so yeah, we, 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 create- we will we will sell you <laughs> get masks that'll keep you safe. Yeah, you know. So if you don't have one, you can show up, put it on right there, and you'll be safe. And yeah, be safe. We'll, so we'll take care of that for you. Yep. Yep. So it's all good. We got you there. We got you covered too as well. So and 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 if you're coming to the club and you're like, well, I don't know if I have enough. We even have an ATM because I'm a greedy capitalist. We're going to give you all the opportunity to spend we your money right there at the club. All the corners, right? We're covering all the corners. You're going to have uh, gutty snack packs. You're going to be able to enjoy some pizza. I mean, we got. We're going to be able to have everything ready for everybody. So you definitely don't want to miss the rest of these shows for the rest of the year. Just come in. Come out. Support live comedy. We want to see you there. We enjoy every single one of you and appreciate every single one of you too as well. So I come out, you. come out to the shows, and then also uh, if you can uh, find that, uh, make, yeah, you, find make, that the, the subscribe button. I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> find the subscribe button exactly, and, and, the and the little bell that says, "Hey, I want to be notified." Yeah, because we want to know, we want you to know when we're doing stuff, so you can come on and enjoy it here. So. Exactly. Uh, so we want you to come out with us and 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 be here with us and also support us and follow us. Give us give us a thumbs up. You give know, us a thumbs you know, up. We, follow us. Like, notified. Yep. It's all good, man. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I have to say. So that's all you got to say? Are you? Uh, sure? You know, I'm sure I could come up with something else to say, but I'll you know. Bye, well, right, man. Uh, it was so, a great show. Hey. And even at the end of the show, I'm still Pops. Yep, and I'm the Rican. And this has been the Pops and the Rican Show. Yep. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. The Pops and the Rican. The Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican. Pops and the Rican.